Welcome to Grow with Angie. Today I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step process on how you can make your own cornmeal to then make your own cornbread, cornbread muffins. We're going to make it with a dehydrator of your choice. We're going to do it with fresh corn, a coffee grinder, and some mason jars. <laughs> Start peeling the husks off of the corn cobs. I'm doing this with 12 cobs that will give you an idea of how much it makes for the recipe. And I'm going to take all of my husks and throw it out into the compost or it goes to the chickens. Use a kitchen scrubber to get all the little fine hairs off. This will just help with the grinding process later, but it doesn't have to be perfect. The next step is to fill up a large pot with water. I really wish I had one of those pot fillers, but it's okay, I can manage. Run to your pantry and grab yourself some salt. You want this water to taste like the ocean. Make sure it's very, very salty. It will bring out the sweetness of your corn. Turn on the stove and start to boil your water. Once your water is boiling, you can go ahead and add the corn and you're gonna leave it for about 10 minutes. Use a drying rack to lay out the corn. And this is just a corningware holder that I use. It doesn't have to be fancy. Place the corn on here until it is room temperature and it has stopped steaming. This will save your hands for when you're ready to cut it off the cob. Once your corn is cooled and you're able to touch it, go ahead and cut it off the cob. The bigger the pieces, the better, as it makes it easier to lay out on your food drying trays. For those of you who live in the United States, particularly in Michigan, you may have heard of something called Jiffy Corn Mix. Now I'm proud it's made here in Michigan, but nothing beats making it yourself with fresh corn. Take your corn and lay it out on your food dehydration tray. Again, you can use any type of a dehydrator or you can even do this in the oven, but I love my Excalibur. It really works well. I have lots of space. I can do way more with this in one setting than I can putting it into the oven. I'd like to give a shout out to one of my very best friends, Diane Kidman. She actually blessed me with this Excalibur as she upgraded to a newer, fancier model. She is a best-selling author and herbalist. You can find all of her books on Amazon and I'll go ahead and throw the link in the description below. Once you've determined how many trays you're gonna use, remove the extra ones. I like to space these out to give a little bit more airflow and it seems to cut down on the drying time. Close it all up and get ready to turn it on. Yes, I'm missing a knob. I promise I'll buy a new one soon. I go ahead and just set this for a really long time, 14 hours, but it only took six. Once your corn starts to feel like popcorn, then it's ready to process and grind. Now I've seen some videos where people do this with popcorn and you're just gonna get a different flavor. It's not sweet corn, it's popcorn. So do know that there is a difference in the flavors of the corn. Take your corn and break it up with your hands as much as you can. It should be falling apart on its own anyway if it's dry enough, but the smaller the pieces to get into the grinder, the better. I like to use a small coffee grinder just because this will really beat up your food processor. It etches the plastic and makes it foggy like you can see here on my coffee grinder. You're going to grind it down into a really fine powder and keep going until you get through all of the corn. This is the machine that I use, Proctor & Silix. I've had this for probably 8 to 10 years and it works great. I also use it on eggshells for the chickens. Now you're gonna take a sifter, which I bought at the dollar store, and you're gonna go through and sift out your corn. I like to use my pestle and mortar. It works really well to grind it through. And we're gonna separate out what would be left of the husks or just didn't make it through the first grind. Continue with this until you have 
all of this sifted through. Now you're gonna take everything that didn't make it through the first time and do it again. I know it seems tedious to do it twice, but you'd be surprised at how much you're gonna get from that second grind. So we don't wanna waste anything. And if you've learned anything from me watching my other videos, I try not to waste much. Anything that is left over after the second grind is gonna go out to the chickens. As you can see here, this made about two cups with the 12 cobs. I'm gonna add a quarter cup of flour, a teaspoon of granulated sugar. It doesn't make it sweet, it just enhances your flavor. Add a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. Add a tablespoon of baking powder. And your last dry ingredient is gonna be a half a teaspoon of salt. I'm just doing the dry ingredients at this point. I'm going to throw it into a mason jar and store it. And then later when I'm ready to actually make my bread or my muffins, I'll add one and a quarter cups of milk, two large eggs, and a quarter cup of vegetable oil. These also make amazing gifts to give away. I've done this as well to Diane Kidman and you can just put a little tag on it with the rest of the ingredients they need to add, and boom, there you go, your own cornbread mix. I hope you enjoyed this video and making your own cornmeal. There is nothing like making it yourself at home. Whether you're using something like an Excalibur or even your oven, it can all be done. Just take a little time, enjoy the process, and you'll enjoy the food. Thanks for watching my channel. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and as always, leave me comments below. I love to hear from you guys. And we'll catch you on the next episode of Grow With Angie.